Hello, welcome to Patul Gurkhar Educational Channel. Today in this online lecture, I will introduce you to another very important subject, Hematology. And the lesson plan I have placed on the left hand side and the points are 1. Definition of Hematology 2. Basic information of blood and blood components such as red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets and proteins involved in blood coagulation 3. Basic information of blood forming organs 4. Importance of biochemistry in understanding hematology 5. Relation of hematology with immunology 6. Relation of hematology with transfusion medicine 7. Importance of hematology laboratory tests and reports in the diagnosis of a disease and 8. Theory and practical topics of basic hematology Well, first the definition Hematology is a branch of medicine that deals with the study of blood, the blood forming organs and blood diseases and what is hematology subject? Hematology subject includes the study of etiology means the scientific study of the causes of disease, diagnosis of the disease, treatment, prognosis means opinion of physicians based on experience on how the disease may further develop and prevention of blood diseases. Hematology includes the study of blood components and coagulation and it includes 1. Analysis of the concentration, structure and functions of the cells and their precursors in the bone marrow. 2. Analysis of chemical constituents of plasma or serum intimately linked with blood cell structure and functions and 3. Study of functions of the platelets and proteins involved in blood coagulation. Changes in any one of the characteristics mentioned above uh, like, like 1, 2 and 3 may produce hematological diseases. The hematology laboratory deals with routine determination of total number of cells in circulation hemoglobin concentration and differential count of white blood cells that means leukocytes based on the study of the stained blood smear study of the stained blood smear helps in detecting morphological abnormalities of various cells seen in the peripheral blood circulation well how to describe blood Blood may be described as a specialized connective tissue which circulates in a closed system of blood vessels. The circulating blood consists of suspension of formed elements such as erythrocytes that means red blood cells, leukocytes means white blood cells and platelets in a pale yellow colored fluid called plasma. In adults, the total volume of blood comprises about 8% of the body weight or about 5600 ml average in a 70 kg man. The formed elements account for about 46% of total blood volume. Then what are the functions of blood? The functions of blood are 1. Respiration, transport of oxygen from the lungs to the tissues and of carbon dioxide from tissues to the lungs. 2. Excretion Transport of metabolic waste to the lungs, kidneys, skin and intestines for removal. 3. Maintenance of normal acid-base balance. 4. Nutrition Transport of absorbed fatty acids, monosaccharides and amino acids. 5. Regulation of water balance. 6. Regulation of body temperature. 7. Transport of hormones, vitamins and salts which contain cations such as sodium, potassium, calcium etc. and anions 
such as fluorides, phosphates, sulfates, and carbonates. Eight. Transport of metabolites. Nine. Defense against infection by the white blood cells and the antibodies. Number ten. Coagulation of blood to stop bleeding by the mechanism of various proteins involved in coagulation. Production, development and maturation of various cells in blood is known as hematopoiesis and it consists of production of erythrocytes means erythropoiesis, production of leukocytes means leukopoiesis and production of thrombocytes means thrombopoiesis. And the normal sites of poiesis of blood cells are for fetus less than 2 months it is yolk sac. From 2 to 7 months of age it is liver and partially spleen. And then after 3 months for full term infants and for children and adults hematopoiesis takes place in the bone marrow. In normal health, only mature cells are seen in the peripheral blood. Development of blood cells takes place through three stages. One, multiplication of precursor stem cells. Two, structural and functional maturation. And three, release into peripheral blood circulation. A totipotent stem cell is a common precursor cell for all series of cells that means erythrocytes, megacarocytes, lymphocytes and granulocytes. Totipotent cell means that cell which gives rise to many different types of cells. The blast cells through several stages of division and differentiation then develop into mature cells of each series. Vitamin B12 and folic acid are necessary for DNA synthesis and hence for cell division. Hence, the deficiency of these two vitamins results in a decrease in the number of mature cells in the circulation. Adult humans have average 20 to 30 trillion red cells at any given time, constituting approximately 70% of all cells by number and about 4 billion white blood cells. Average lifespan of RBCs is 120 days and that of WBCs is about 13 to 20 days. After their respective lifespans, these cells are destroyed in the spleen. Well, now I will give you information on various cells of blood. First, red blood cell, erythrocyte. It is a circular boy concave cell without a nucleus and it has a diameter of about 7.5 micrometer and thickness of 2 micrometer. It contains hemoglobin and is the heaviest of all formed elements of blood. Because of the biconcavity, the red blood cell gets bigger surface area for the diffusion of oxygen. The erythrocyte can also squeeze itself through a capillary more easily so that it can supply oxygen to the various cells of the body. Just compare red blood cell with other body cells and also with white blood cell and platelet and you will realize the difference. The erythrocyte does not contain nucleus and structures like ribosomes, endoplasmic reticulum, centriole and mitochondria. Hence, it does not have ability to synthesize protein. In the absence of mitochondria, there is little ability to metabolize fatty acids and amino acids and energy is generated by red blood cell almost exclusively through the breakdown of glucose molecules. Blood contains per microliter average 5 million red blood cells. Then the leukocytes. The leukocytes or white blood cells 
are nucleated cells. In healthy adults, the number of leukocytes is between 5000 and 10,000 cells per microliter of blood. And the various types of white blood cells found in circulating blood can be distinguished between granulocytes. That means those which contain minute small particles and non-granulocytes which does not contain small particles. And granulocytes are neutrophils 50 to 70 percent, eosinophils 1 to 4 percent, and then non-granulocytes are basophils 0.21 percent, lymphocytes 25 to 45 percent, and monocytes 2 to 8 percent. The functions and properties of leukocytes are these are needed by the body for its defense against invading organisms like bacteria, viruses, parasites, and also cancer cells. It is mainly the neutrophils and the monocytes that attack and destroy viruses and bacteria in the circulating blood. Plasma cells, which are derived from lymphocytes, produce immunoglobulins which neutralize the toxins produced by invading organisms. Then the platelets. The platelets are very small non-nucleated bodies, diameter about 3 micrometer, consisting of cytoplasm which is enclosed within a cell membrane. Golgi apparatus and scanty amount of mitochondria are found in the cell. Platelets also contain ADP, various clotting factors and microtubules made up of thrombostenin which help the platelets to retract during clotting mechanism. The main function of platelets is to assist in hemostasis that means prevention of blood loss through various processes of clotting mechanism. The number of circulating platelets is between 1,50,000 to 5 lakhs per microliter of blood. When the platelet count goes below critical count, that means less than 40,000 per microliter, the patient develops hemorrhagic symptoms. And the normal lifespan of platelets is between 7 and 14 days. Specific antigens are present on red blood cells made up of lipoproteins and glycolipids and specific antibodies are present in serum as shown in the figure on the left hand side. Normal blood transfusion depends on these antigens and antibodies. Wrong type of blood transfusion could be hazardous to the person who receives blood. Hence, proper study of red cell antigen and serum antibodies is necessary to understand principles of blood transfusion. A good study of biochemistry subject is necessary for proper understanding of hematology subject. For example, refer to the figure on the left hand side. In this figure, it is shown that why sickle cell anemia, why in sickle cell anemia, red blood cell assumes structure like a sickle. It is due to addition of amino acid valine instead of glutamic acid in hemoglobin chain synthesis due to genetic defect. There are several such disorders you will understand well if you study biochemistry subject well. Patient's hematology report is obtained like this and from the chain values of hematology test a physician is able to diagnose a specific disease. In this report, very low values of hemoglobin, RBC count and hematocrit PCB values. It is indicated that the person is suffering from severe anemia. During your studies, these are theory topics, these are practical topics and this is a list of basic practicals you will conduct during your practical hours and also in internship. Well, today in this lecture I have covered these topics for you. Now just see if you are able to solve 
following related questions. Well, kindly refer to chapter 37 of our MBT book or chapter 27 of our biochemistry book for more information on hematology introduction. Kindly subscribe and share our educational videos on Prakul Gorkar educational channel and hit bell button so that you will know the upcoming next educational video. We are still in critical pandemic phase, hence kindly follow all corona safety protocols, stay safe and with happy frame of mind, bye bye.